Tonight on EastEnders, Patrick returns home to a whirlwind of chaos, reuniting with Yolanda amid a charity fundraiser. Pastor Clayton's jealousy surfaces, leading to confrontations. Meanwhile, George struggles with grief, leading to a dangerous decision. Elsewhere, secrets abound as Dean's situation unfolds, and Nadine's urgent message to Jay raises questions. Tonight's spoilers for EastEnders, Patrick returns home to a chaotic scene. In Patrick's absence, a great deal has transpired. Spoilers for EastEnders for tonight, Patrick goes back to Walford and meets Yolanda again after a long absence. He quickly finds out, though, about everything he has been missing while he has been away. Spoilers for EastEnders fans, how will Patrick respond to all of this commotion once he returns home? Spoilers for EastEnders, Patrick returns to Walford. Pastor Clayton and Yolanda are working on the charity event this evening. When Patrick reappears, though, they are cut off. When Pastor Clayton discovers that Yolanda is more concerned about Patrick's return than the fundraising, he becomes unhappy. Soon after, Patrick learns everything he has been missing, including Jack's extramarital affair. Patrick confronts Jack about the issue as a result. Patrick is skeptical of the couple, but Denise urges Yolanda to keep her hospital stay a secret for the time being. Will all the facts come to light for him? Spoilers for EastEnders, George struggles to overcome his sadness. George calls his son Junior after Gloria passes away to let him know the family news. He only manages to reach his voicemail, though. Eddie quickly gives George a ring and requests to see him. Although George accepts to meet him, the encounter is not pleasant. George then goes to the ring and initiates a fight after becoming increasingly enraged. Phil tries to reason with him, but he won't give up. George loses the battle and is knocked out rather quickly. Is there any other method he can discover to cope with his loss? Spoilers for EastEnders, Dean's predicament is a hot topic in the square. Jean tries to console Jade, who is having difficulty coping with Dean's arrest, while Johnny, Linda, Denise, Sharon, and Stacy get together to discuss their strategy. What fate has Dean? When Nadine calls Jay Honey, they exchange their marathon numbers, but Jay quickly gets distracted by something else after hearing Nadine's voicemail. She has to see him right away. What is it that she desires? Spoiler alert, George puts himself in danger in EastEnders. He disobeys Phil's warnings. When George tries to talk to his estranged son Junior about the recent events involving the Knight family, he only gets his voicemail. Eddie and George grudgingly get together to talk about Gloria, but their meeting ends in a furious altercation. A troubled George later makes his way to the underground boxing club. George is told by Phil not to fight, but he fights anyway and is knocked out. Johnny, Linda, Sharon, Denise, and Stacy are working hard to ensure that their new plan is flawless in the meanwhile. In another scene, Jean attempts consoling Jade after learning about Dean's deeds. Pastor Clayton also gets envious today when Yolanda starts focusing on Patrick once he returns home. Patrick approaches Jack after he betrays Denise. But when Patrick finds out that Denise and Yolanda haven't told him about Denise's hospital stay, he starts to suspect that they're hiding something. At last, Nadine calls Jay to let him know that she must see him right now. As former BBC One controller Lord Michael Grade recounts, EastEnders was almost a geriatric camper park in the Northeast when he commissioned the serial opera. In an interview with Boom Radio on Sunday, Ofcom chairman Lord Michael Grade disclosed that EastEnders had nearly turned into a geriatric caravan park in the Northeast. He took part in an interview that Joe Brand did for her new radio program, Open the Box. The former chief executive of Channel 4 and controller of BBC One, 81, disclosed some behind-the-scenes details about the show, including information about EastEnders. He oversaw schedule management and program commissioning while he was employed by BBC One. He recalled that, One of the first decisions I had to make was they had decided they were going to do a soap opera on BBC One. When I got there, there was one being developed, so I went to visit Jonathan Powell, the head of the drama series, to find out more about this supposed soap opera. He stated, I've only just taken over and the show I've inherited is set in a geriatric caravan park in the Northeast. My expression dropped. Really? I exclaimed. Right now, where is that? I've been that, he declared. 
And he continued, we've got a show called EastEnders, based on a square in the East End of London. Lord Michael Grade went on to say that he decided to hand the work up to the producers and writers after that. But when it was finished, he wanted them to deliver him the first episode. I replied, that sounds a bit better than a geriatric caravan park. He informed me that Tony Holland, the writer, and Julius Smith were in command. I said, I'll leave it to you, send me the first episode. He continued by saying that he was nervous to watch the first episode of the show in 1985 because he thought it would be horrible. Speaking with some hesitation, he recalled inserting the cassette into the machine and thinking, oh my god, this is a year-long commitment. This might turn out badly. Nevertheless, he came to the conclusion that as soon as the opening titles began, he knew everything would go according to plan. I knew it was all right as soon as the opening titles and music started. The opening titles and music are always a good indicator of how experienced the producers and director are. I knew right away that this was going to be okay, he said. Joe Brand questioned the former head of BBC One on why the television network really required the show during the interview. In response, he said, ITV had Emmerdale Farm, Crossroads, and Coronation Street, which was through the roof every night. Additionally, the BBC believed that the schedule required it. They were correct, too. They were fortunate to have Jonathan Powell select it and assign Tony Holland and Julia to write it. He also acknowledged that with the success of the soap opera, Coronation Street has adopted the tragic storylines of EastEnders as inspiration. People don't realize this anymore, but nothing horrible ever happened in Coronation Street. It was very gentle and fluffy, lovely and warm. That's a reaction to what we did on EastEnders, but it does now. It dealt with social issues, really difficult family grief, and a host of other things, making it far more socially conscious. Eventually, Coronation Street also adopted this strategy. Finally, Grade mentioned how watching the soap opera allowed you to immerse yourself in another world for 30 minutes. The great thing about a soap opera is you go into another world for half an hour, he said, revealing his affection for the show. Andy Stenders, Coronation Street is fantastic at that, you enter someone else's world and spend 30 minutes feeling like you're a part of the neighborhood. The same was true with EastEnders, there was a sense of community and place, he said in closing. After raising suspicions that he would quit the BBC soap opera after receiving post-strictly offers, Bobby Brazier renews EastEnders' contract to continue as Freddie Slater. According to reports, Bobby Brazier has extended his contract with EastEnders in response to rumors that he will leave the show. The 20-year-old model and actor reportedly had a ton of offers after performing on Strictly Come Dancing the previous year. Nevertheless, he has made the decision to stay in the BBC drama as Freddie Slater after considering leaving it. Bobby is seen as one of the square's brightest young stars, and to lose him would have been a massive blow for the show, a source told The Mirror. He enjoys portraying Freddie, but he felt compelled to carefully evaluate all of the opportunities that were made to him following Strictly since he was in such high demand, fortunately, he has now made the decision to extend his contract, and everyone is overjoyed. He is still in talks for other projects, but they will coexist with his work on the show, much like Tamika Empson's recent play or Molly Rainford's single from last year. Mail Online was informed by a BBC spokesperson that we never comment on artists' contracts. A Bobby representative has been contacted by Mail Online for comment. Bobby, who placed second on 2023's Strictly Come Dancing, resumed filming EastEnders in February of this year. He has been playing Freddy since 2022, but after splitting from co-star Ellie Leach on Strictly, he is now rumored to be seeking to follow in the footsteps of Harry Styles, the worldwide pop phenomenon. About Bobby and Ellie's breakup, a source told OK. Magazine last month. They were very close during the tour, so their love really blossomed then, but after that ended, they spent much less time together. Singing is Bobby's greatest passion, he aspires to be a worldwide superstar vocalist, and some influential music executives believe he can succeed. His goal is to become the next Harry Styles and gain recognition as a legitimate artist. He may continue acting now that he has all the time in the world, but singing is truly his love. Only a few weeks after rumors of their romance surfaced, it was disclosed last month that the 23-year-old former Coronation Street actress Ellie had broken up with the late Jade Goody's son and her ex-partner Jeff Brazier due to their hectic schedules. 
Ellie posted an update on Instagram on Saturday, saying, hair's kinda crazy today, while sticking out her tongue for a humorous photo. Dating rumors about Bobby and Ellie began during their time on Strictly Come Dancing in December, and they became more serious when the BBC program was on tour in January and February. But while Bobby reprises his role as Freddie Slater in the BBC soap opera and is apparently considering a Hollywood career, Ellie is presently performing in the Cluedo stage show, which is making its way around UK theatres. They spent a lot less time together after that ended, but love blossomed between them when they were in close quarters on the tour, a TV insider told The Sun. That allowed them time to reflect on the future, which will probably lead them in very different paths over the next year or two. Because they both truly value their friendship, they concluded that it would be best to stop it while they were still friends and in the lead. For comments, Mail Online got in touch with Ellie and Bobby's agents. Please subscribe our channel.